Hi there folks, Simon here. This is TAC University, a series where I go over some tips and tricks and maybe it's just some things that I've learned along the way of playing TAC to maybe help you bring your game to a higher level. Today we're going to talk about capstone placement. What makes a really good capstone placement? There are five main guidelines that I like to look at when I think about where to place a capstone. And we're going to look at all of those today. This particular game, which I have anonymized the names of so you don't know who did what, is a fantastic example of how to place a capstone because this capstone placement from White follows every single guideline and that's tough to hit all of those at the same time. So let's jump into this game a little bit. We are looking at it in PTN Ninja. I did do a video on PTN Ninja, so if you're unfamiliar with it, you can check out that video and that'll show you how to work this. So we'll see right about here, we are at move seven. No tack threats yet, but white's about to move, make the first tack threat of the game. So black has to respond to that in some way to stop it. Capturing up here is how white would make that road. Black responds by making this capture here. Now this is move eight and move nine, we see the capstone drop. Now this is a phenomenal place to drop a capstone. It follows all five of the guidelines. Let's jump into those right now. The first one is you want to place this capstone somewhere centrally. So we do see that it is in the four center squares of this six by six board. Doesn't have to be in the four center squares exactly. It could be in the outer center squares. Really just as long as it's not against the edge. But these very center squares tend to be a lot more powerful in terms of the later game, how your capstone works. Number two, you got to place that capstone so it can't be isolated. So what does it mean to isolate a capstone? That means, let's say the capstone had, this piece wasn't here, instead it was just this piece. If this piece went up here, the stack moved up there, this capstone would be all alone. So basically having that capstone away from the rest of the action, having no pieces next to it is isolating a capstone. And you definitely don't want that because your capstone needs to be in the thick of the action the entire time. So the reason this works for not isolating the capstone is because it has two opportunities to capture down or to capture over onto an enemy piece. There's nothing that black can do in this moment to keep white from capturing one of those pieces. This makes it so that capstone is not isolated, cannot be isolated. So excellent little pattern there to look for is those diagonal pieces next to each other. That tends to be a good spot to put a capstone if you're just looking at maybe one thing of how not to isolate it. Point number three place it near stacks. So while the stack is a little small, it still counts. It is still getting a captive. And so you'd be able to free that captive and do a lot of things with it offensively. And that is great. It forces the opponent to think, okay, do I want to give up this stack or do I need to escape with this stack to keep that capstone from getting it? It forces a reaction from your opponent. The fourth point is place the capstone early. Now, this kind of seems counterintuitive because you want to look for the ideal placement for this capstone, make sure that it's in just the right spot, but you don't want to wait too long, otherwise the capstone can't do as much work. In this particular case, right around turn nine, that's right in that sort of Goldilocks zone of when you should place your capstone. Right in between, I think, Six and 10, I think, are really good turns to place the capstone, but only if it makes sense to do so. We do see later on down in this game that Black doesn't place the capstone until turn 14. And they were probably in a little bit of trouble by that point to place that. The final fifth point is place it in a position where it is both offensive and defensive. Now this is key. 
you want your capstone to do a lot of work. You want it to work for you in terms of where your capstone goes to make that road, since it is part of a road. But you also want to make sure that it can really interrupt your opponent and keep them from making that road. So in this case, this capstone can move over here to continue this horizontal road threat and at the same time cut off this vertical threat from black. It can move down to cut off the horizontal threat from black. It can do a lot of different things and they're all offensive and defensive at the same time because we're continuing this horizontal threat or continuing this vertical threat from white by moving that capstone around. So very solid positioning from this. So if we look down here, let's say we go where black is starting to place that capstone, white makes a threat and they can just place here for a road. Well, black hasn't played the capstone yet. Black decides to drop this capstone here. Now, let's take a look and analyze this capstone placement. So, was it placed centrally? No, it wasn't. It's right on the edge. Can it be isolated? Not super easily, because capturing up would just result in a recapture. And capturing down would also result in a recapture. So, moving it up or down doesn't really work too well in this case. Place it near stacks. This is right next to a stack. So that's good. Place it in a position where it is both offensive and defensive. All right, so this is defensive in that it cuts off this threat. And it's also offensive in that it can come over and make a new threat on the very next turn, make its own tag threat. So yes, it follows a lot of these guidelines. Uh, it didn't play early and it wasn't central. And it can almost be isolated, but not quite. So it does follow that it's next to a stack, it's in a position where it's both offensive and defensive, and basically it can't be isolated in this point. So it's not a terrible capstone position, but it's not nearly as good as the capstone position from White. If you're wondering how this game turned out, White did eventually win. Not saying it's specifically because of the capstone placement, but I'm sure it played a role. That is all for today. Thanks for watching. Be sure to tune into the next video in this TAC University series. And as always, be sure to check out the description of this video to find all the resources for TAC, like the TAC subreddit, and especially the TAC Discord, which is the community hub, where you will find all sorts of people to play with and discuss all things TAC. And you can even play asynchronous games, that is games without a timer, that you can play even one move per day in the Discord server without even using any external programs just right there into the Discord server. It's really fun, really easy. It's a great way to play with some folks and get better at TAC without all that pressure of having maybe a time limit or carving out that time during the day to play on playtac.com. Again, all the resources are there. Playtac.com, the Discord server, the subreddit, my Instagram, my Twitch, all those fun things that are my social media and all the general tack links are all there. How to play videos and all that jazz. Be sure to check that out. And until next time, have a great day and happy tacking.